you talk about obscure fronts of the Second World War, it's hard to get much more obscure than the actions between the Red Sea Flotilla of the Imperial Italian Navy against the East Indies Station of the British Royal Navy. But the vast World War was largely made up of small actions between small units and the almost completely forgotten naval component of the largely forgotten East Africa campaign included many of those moments. And perhaps none more peculiar than the story of three vessels that were left remnants of a failed campaign, cut off from home, trying to escape halfway round the world. And there Odd stories are the very essence of the meaning of the term World War. It is history that deserves to be remembered. The Second Italo-Ethiopian War, fought between 1935 and 1937, was characteristic of the world situation leading up to the Second World War. The war of aggression between fascist Italy and the Ethiopian Empire represented an attack by a relatively modern Italian army against the ill-prepared forces of an Ethiopian monarchy that had been in power since the year 1270. The war included war crimes, massacres, and the odd fact that Nazi Germany, mad at Italian opposition to their policy in Austria, prolonged the war by providing arms to the Ethiopians. In brief, some 380,000 Ethiopian troops and a roughly equal number of Ethiopian civilians died in the conflict. Ethiopian Emperor Haile Selassie was forced into exile in Britain, and fascist Italy, under Benito Mussolini, occupied Ethiopia. The Second Italo-Ethiopian War was characteristic of the period leading up to the Second World War. It represented not just the naked expansionism of the Axis powers, but the ineffectiveness of the League of Nations, which was essentially created to try to prevent exactly the sort of war that Italy was fighting in East Africa. It was one of many events that essentially presaged the inevitability of the coming war, and it also set up one of the most obscure campaigns of the Second World War, the East Africa Campaign. In 1936, Prime Minister Mussolini merged the Italian colonies of Somalia and Eritrea with occupied Ethiopia to create the colony of Italian East Africa. France and Britain declared war on Germany after the German invasion of Poland in September 1939, but Italy did not initially enter the war, stated non-belligerent. Italy was simply not prepared for war at the time, and planners had expected at least another three years to be prepared. When Mussolini decided to enter the war by invading France in June of 1940, the apparent reason was because he thought Germany was going to win the war quickly. Mussolini saw it as a political opportunity to have a greater say in the New World Order in hopes of gaining territorial concessions in the Mediterranean and Africa. But it left his troops in Africa unprepared for what was to come. While there is some disagreement over his motives for entering the war, the Italian entry into the war widened the war significantly, specifically with the implications in East Africa. The troops in Italian East Africa represented a threat to Egypt, technically neutral, but by treaty occupied by Britain, and British and French colonies in East Africa. The East Africa campaign was fought largely with forces of the British Commonwealth, assisted by some Belgian and French forces, and Ethiopian resistance fighters, fighting against Italian and Italian colonial troops. But the East Africa campaign included a lesser-known naval component, centered on the Italian Red Sea Flotilla. Based in the Red Sea port city of Massawa in Italian Eritrea, the flotilla was not large, but represented a threat to British shipping and supply. The mix of aging vessels included seven destroyers, eight modern submarines, a handful of torpedo boats, and several support vessels. Because of British control of the Suez Canal, the small flotilla was separated from the rest of the Imperial Italian Navy in the Mediterranean. Opposing the Red Sea Flotilla was the East Indies Station of the Royal Navy, responsible for British operation in the Indian Ocean, Persian Gulf, and Red Sea. The Royal Navy had various bases in East Africa, the Middle East, India, and Ceylon. The East Africa campaign itself was relatively brief, lasting between June of 1940 and November of 1941. While the Italian troops had a numerical advantage, they were largely unprepared and trying to defend a vast territory. While they had some initial success, the eventual Italian defeat is generally considered to be the first significant Allied victory of the war. The performance of the Red Sea Flotilla was particularly dismal in the campaign, as historian Douglas Pritch noted. The Italian Navy at Misawa showed a stunning lack of energy. By early 1941, Italian defeats on land and shortage of supply made it clear that the fleet could no longer be supported in Misawa, and plans were made to send all vessels that could to Allied ports and destroy the rest. For the remaining submarines of the flotilla, that meant a dangerous path around the Cape of Good Hope in Africa, trying to reach ports of their new ally, Vichy France, and that alone showed how the war had changed, because Italy had entered the war by attacking France. 
But that path was impossible for a surface vessel, and so three surface vessels, two armed merchant cruisers named Ram 1 and Ram 2, and the colonial ship Eritrea, were tasked with going someplace a bit more distant. These three most modern vessels, the ones thought most likely to make the trip, were given the best repair, refit, and supply possible, tasked with evading the British blockade and making it across the Pacific Ocean to Imperial Japan, the third member of the Tripartite Pact, more than 8,000 nautical miles away. The Ram Cruisers became life not around war, but around bananas. Ram was an acronym for Regia Azienda Monopolio del Banane, roughly the Royal Banana Company. These relatively modern vessels were banana boats built in the 1930s to transport bananas grown in Italian East Africa colonies to Italy. Medium-sized vessels, around 380 feet long with a displacement of around 3,600 tons, like many merchant vessels of the era, they were built with government subsidies under the provision that they'd be built so that they could be converted into cruisers in time of war. Each was built with hard spots meant to mount heavy guns. The colonial ship Eritrea was the only of her kind in the Italian Navy. The concept of a colonial ship was a medium vessel designed for a tropical service, intended to demonstrate colonial presence or show the flag. The primary role was to defend territorial waters, enforcing sovereignty and policing maritime areas. The vessel was also specifically equipped with a full workshop, allowing it to service submarines. At first, the 317-foot-long, 3,110-ton displacement Eritrea seems an odd choice to send on a trip halfway around the world. The ship was only lightly armed, described as a sloop and more of a police vessel than a warship. But the Eritrea had a special engine design, using diesel-electric engines for cruising and diesel engines for sprints. The unique design gave the ship an exceptional range, some 7,000 nautical miles, allowing the possibility of reaching Japanese waters. Moreover, her ability to support submarines would be useful in the Far East. Ram 1 and Eritrea departed on February 20th, first having to avoid British ships and planes as they transited the Red Sea and then the Gulf of Aden into the Indian Ocean where they dispersed. Both were attempting to disguise themselves as either allied or neutral merchant vessels. On February 27th, Ram 1 was sighted approximately 325 miles west of the Maldive Islands by the light cruiser HMS Leander. The 559-foot, 4-inch long, 9,740-ton displacement light cruiser was the lead ship in her class. She was serving in the New Zealand Division, which would become the Royal New Zealand Navy later in 1941. Leander had received word of the recent capture by Commonwealth forces of Mogadishu, the capital of Italian Somaliland and had moved to the area under the theory that Italian merchant vessels trying to escape might transit that direction. Ram 1 was proceeding without flag and was challenged by Leander. Ram 1 tried to bluff, putting up a British merchant flag and using misleading signals. When Leander approached and ordered her to stop, Ram 1 ran up the Italian flag and trained its guns. Leander was larger, faster, and better armored than Ram 1, but that did not mean that a fight between the two vessels was a foregone conclusion. In November 1941, a Leander-class light cruiser of the Australian Navy HMAS Sydney would be sunk in a battle with a German commerce raider Cormoran in a similar encounter. Despite the difference between the two ships, the four 120mm guns mounted aboard the Ram 1 were a real risk to the Leander. But the fire from Ram 1 was inaccurate, and HMS Leander fired off five salvos in less than a minute, blowing large holes in the Italian ship and setting her on fire. Ram 1 surrendered, and her crew abandoned ship. The vessel exploded minutes later as the fires reached its ammunition. Two members of Ram 1's crew died as a result of the brief battle. Eritrea was sighted at least twice. One time the British ship turned away, and a second time, while being trailed by a British vessel, Eritrea made smoke and managed to escape into the night. The crew then made cosmetic changes to the ship's profile, masquerading as a Portuguese patrol ship. Portugal controlled part of the island of East Timor, and as Portugal was neutral, the Italians hoped the ship would go unchallenged by the British. The ruse worked, and Eritrea safely made it to the port of Kobe, Japan, in March. But despite being a member of the Tripartite Alliance, Japan was not as friendly a port as was expected. Japan had not yet entered the war in March of 1941 and did not want to antagonize the Americans and British before it did. There was little fanfare as the ship arrived in Japan. Eritrea had expected to operate as a commerce raider, essentially pirates, in the Pacific. But Japan did not let the ship leave port until after Japan entered the war in December. After December, Italian submarines became part of the connection between members of the Axis, transporting rare materials between Europe and Japan, and Eritrea supported Italian submarines transiting the Pacific. But the situation changed again after Italy signed the armistice in September 1943. Upon surrender, Italy was no longer part of the Axis, and Japan no longer their ally. 
The crew of Eritrea was at sea when they intercepted a wireless report from Reuters about the armistice. Although they had received no orders, the crew realized that if they returned to Japan, they would be interned. Instead, they changed course and, this time, had to escape a blockade by the Japanese Navy, surrendering to the British in Ceylon. The Eritrea then joined the Italian co-belligerent Navy, fighting now on the side of the Allies. She serviced Allied submarines and merchant vessels through the end of the war. Ram 2 left Misawa two days after Ram 1 and Eritrea and successfully made the passage to Japan. Like Eritrea, the Japanese would not allow Ram 2 to operate as a commerce raider. Ram 2 had its weapons removed, was renamed Kalatea 2, and was chartered by the Japanese government as a cargo vessel. The ship, with its Italian crew, served as a cargo vessel for the Japanese until the armistice, when she was scuttled by her crew to prevent her capture by their now no longer allies, the Japanese. The Japanese imprisoned the crew and refloated the ship and used it as a transport for the Japanese Navy. The ship was sunk by American air attack off Indochina in January 1945. After the war, Eritrea, who was one of only a couple of ships of the Red Sea Flotilla to survive the war, was given to the French for war reparations and served in the French Navy until 1965. In 1966, it was sunk as a target ship in a French nuclear test. The voyages of these three vessels of the Red Sea Flotilla represented the shifting nature of the war. Cut off from their home country at the outset of war, their differing fates tracked a dynamic conflict. Ram 1, an Italian ship in the Indian Ocean, sunk by a ship manned by a crew from New Zealand. Ram 2, who made it all the way to Japan, only to be prevented from fighting the war by an ally who had not yet entered the war and ended up serving in two navies, only to be sunk by the Americans after Italy had left the war. And tiny Eritrea, whose friends became enemies, and whose enemies became friends. Is there a greater example of the global nature and shifting fortunes of the Second World War than these three tiny vessels that deserve to be remembered? I hope you enjoyed this episode of The History Guy, short snippets of forgotten history between 10 and 15 minutes long. And if you did enjoy, please go ahead and click that thumbs up button. If you have any questions or comments or suggestions for future episodes, please write those in the comment section. I will be happy to personally respond. Be sure to follow The History Guy on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and check out our merchandise on teespring.com. And if you'd like more episodes on forgotten history, all you need to do is subscribe.